Welcome to the Casuals Guide to UFC 297 Strickland vs. Duplessis, where I show you filthy casuals why this card is going to be a banger. This card has been filled with a ton of drama, from verbal back and forth to actual blows being thrown. This card has been overflowing with animosity, so let's get right into it. In the main event, Sean Strickland defends his middleweight title for the very first time when he faces Drikas Duplessis. Sean had a quick rise to the title. He started the journey off by stepping in on short notice to face the upcoming Nasruddin Imovov. He made it look too easy and would win an easy unanimous decision. He will follow that up by taking another prospect in Abus Magomedov. After a fast paced first round, it was Sean who would maintain his wits and eventually would finish Abus in the second round. This fight would put him in line for the title and with Drikas taking time to heal his injuries, Sean would be given the title fight. Sean would shock the world when he would not only beat Adesanya, but he would dominate him for all five rounds to become the new middleweight champion of the world. He is now defending for the very first time against a guy who has also been on the rise. The surging South African has been perfect in the UFC so far. He is 6-0. He made his UFC debut against Marcus Perez where he would win by first round knockout. He would follow that up with a huge knockout win over Trevin Giles. And he would start to get on y'all casuals radar when he would face middleweight staple Brad Tavares. They would go to absolute war, giving the fans a great fight. One where Duplessis would win by unanimous decision. And he would break into the rankings with the win over Darren Till, where he would lock in the rear naked choke in the very third round. He would continue his climb through the rankings against another middleweight staple in Derek Brunson. He would win due to a corner stoppage at the end of the second round. His patient ascension would lead up to a fight with the former middleweight champion Robert Whittaker. The Reaper does not take kindly to contenders and we all know this. We've seen it before, but against all odds, Drikas would prove that he is the real deal when he would not only beat Robert Whittaker, but he would TKO him in impressive fashion. This has earned him his chance at the title. His beef with Izzy was all for nothing since it's a different name he has to face now. Don't get it twisted. Things got heated very quickly between these guys. The press conference had these guys going back and forth. Personal insults were being hurled around. And in the end, it truly seemed that Sean was shaken by the things Drikas was saying. And of course, this would only get worse when they would get seated close to each other during UFC 296. They would come to blows in the crowd and had to be separated by security. This has gotten personal and I'm not sure how Sean is going to react. Drikas has been dishing it out, but maybe poking the bear will backfire. So many factors will come to matter on January 20th, and you do not want to miss it. Don't miss out. In the co-main event, the women's bantamweight title is up for grabs when Raquel Rocky Pennington takes on Myra Bueno Silva. Amanda Nunes dominated the bantamweight division, and after defeating Irina Aldana, she would retire, leaving the title vacant. And now, the number two and the number three ranked woman will fight for the chance to become a new champion. Raquel has been on fire. She has won five fights in a row. Her winning streak started with a decision win over Marion Renault. She would follow that up with another decision win over Pani Kienzad. And she would get a submission win over Macy Kiesan when she would lock in a guillotine choke. Then, a decision win over Aspen Ladd. In her most recent fight, she won a close split decision win over Catelyn Vieira. And now, she's facing another bantamweight on a great run. And now she's facing another bantamweight on a great run. Myra Bueno Silva won a decision win over Wu Yanan. And then she would lock in our armbar against Stephanie Egger to win via submission. She would follow that up with another win, another submission win over Lena Landsberg when she would lock in a nasty knee bar in the second round. In her most recent fight, she would get a huge win, probably the biggest win in her career over Holly Holm when she would lock in a standing ninja choke. Unfortunately for her, this would get overturned to a no contest due to her testing positive on a drug test, but that doesn't take away from what she's capable of. She's a dangerous submission threat with some reckless striking. Both women will really push the pace, and I know you casuals hate watching women's fights, but this one is gonna be a fun one. Don't miss out. We get a fun featherweight fight when almighty Arnold Allen faces off against Movzar Evloev. Arnold Allen is coming off a loss to Max Holloway, his 10 fight win streak was put to an end when he lost by unanimous decision to the Hawaiian. It was the biggest jumping competition for him, but no love lost because no other contender has really been able to get over the blessed roadblock. But before that, he had back to back finishes over Calvin Cater and Dan Hooker. He is a well rounded fighter who can get a bit reckless, and he's going to have to be perfect when he faces Mozart Evloev. Evloev is undefeated as a pro and has won seven straight in the UFC. He has really good decision wins over guys like Sting Sungwoo Choi, Nick Lentz, Hakeem Dawudu, Dan Ige, 
and Diego Lopez. A big criticism for him is that he has not had a single finish in the UFC so far. He has garnered the reputation of being a boring fighter, which is never a great thing. He needs to finish Arnold or at least do a lot of damage. Both guys are a couple wins away from a possible title shot and will be looking to make a statement. Don't miss out. We get a magnificent middleweight matchup when proper Mike Malott tries to break into the rankings when he faces off against the Haitian sensation, the 13th ranked Neil Magny. If you haven't heard of Malott, you are a filthy casual because he has been making a ton of noise putting Canadian MMA on his back. He won his UFC contract on Dana White's Contender Series, winning by submission via a naked choke. And he has won three in a row and has been elevating his stock with each victory. He made his UFC debut against another young guy in Mickey Gall. It was such a fun fight for as long as it lasted. He would land a nasty left hook that floored Mickey and a bit of ground and pound to end the fight for sure. He would follow up with another solid win when he would lock in an arm triangle choke against Johan Lanais to win by submission. It was in his latest fight where he would really show out. At UFC 289 in his home country of Canada, he would lead Canadian MMA to an absolute sweep. He would take on Adam Fugit where he would show great composure and patience as he waited for his big shot. And he would eventually find it in the second round when he landed a huge combination that dropped Fugit and he would lock in the guillotine choke as the crowd absolutely erupted. He's gonna look to keep his momentum going, but in his way stands a tall task in Neil Magny. He has stopped a ton of prospects from becoming contenders. Magny has been the wall that any serious contender has to get through. In his most recent fight, he stepped in on short notice against Ian Gary Machado. There was a lot of animosity built up in such a short amount of time. He would be outmatched as Ian kicked his legs out from under him to a unanimous decision. And now another prospect looks to take on the Neil Magny challenge. This is fantastic matchmaking. Malat looks to break into the top 15 and Magny looks to prove that he's still a force to be reckoned with. Don't miss out. All right, guys, that was my rundown of UFC 297 Strickland versus Duplessis. I hope you casuals learned a thing or two. We are starting the new year with a banger of a pay-per-view. Here are some other fights that are not on the main card that you casuals should still keep an eye on. Chris, the action man Curtis, takes on the power bar Mark andre Barrio. Man, this fight is a banger. I don't know how this fight isn't higher on the card or maybe can replace Carlos Uberg and Dominic Reyes on the main card because both these guys have huge power. Both these guys push the pace. And both these guys have absolute knockout power. This is going to be a fun one, man. And another one to look out for is Charles Jordan versus Sean Woodson. Man, just put Jordan on the main card. He's in his home country. Let him have some shine with Mike Malott. And this is a really good one. You know, Sean Woodson's a tall, rangy boxer. Charles Jordan, he's a little more well-rounded. He could take it to the ground if he wants. But Sean Woodson is no slouch when it comes to the grappling. It's going to be a real good one. Do not miss it. It's going to be a great night of fights. Don't forget to tune in, and I'll see you next time for UFC Fight Night, the Leeds vs. Imavov. But until then, protect your neck and take care. Brother, who cares? Who cares, brother? Who cares, brother? Who cares? Today? Today. Today. Smash.